And he's like, hey, man, my quarterback in Michigan was really, really good. And I'm like, all right, so do you want this ball or not? Because you're talking about somebody else <laughs> hey, right go, now. Go play with him. My name is Sir Yad, and I'm on a mission to interview every Cleveland Browns starting quarterback since 1999. We know their names, and we've seen them struggle. But do we know their side of the story? This is Since 99. The Cleveland Browns have won the game. All right, Spurgeon win the third. I've been doing a lot of research on you, and, it's, and it's, there's not a lot of video interviews. There's like some articles, and it's all about like Tom Brady. And I want to know Spurgeon win the third. So thanks for the time. Appreciate it. Yeah, man, no problem. Um, let's do a little icebreaker, a little true or false, so the uh, audience gets to know a little bit more about you. So uh, true or false, <laughs> you enjoy amateur competitive eating contests in the greater Houston area? That's false. <laughs> that, um, did someone write about that? Yeah, a coworker of mine uh, <laughs> figured out how to use Wikipedia. <laughs> And so he ended up, you know, putting that on there. It's it's not up anymore. I don't know if you checked, but it's not there. Did you delete it? Did you delete it? I, I didn't, but uh, my coworker might have went in there and tried to update it for me. Just... All right, true or false, you were drafted ahead of Tom Brady. That is true. True or false, you have zero Super Bowl losses. That is also true. True or, fa <laughs> true or false, the Patriots passed on Tom Brady six times. I believe that is also That is true. Why aren't why aren't we talking about that? That's a good that's a good question. Just saying. The Brady Six should be the six people that that were drafted ahead of him the Patriots. That's right. The front office has some uh, questions to answer about that, I, I think. True or false, you thought about naming one of your kids All I Do Is? That's one of my kids' middle name. Is it actually? It is. Wait, wait. Yeah. I can't tell if you're joking or not. Slayton All I Do Is Win. That's his name. <laughs> Like, do you have a birth certificate or something? No, his name is Slayton Todd, but I mean, yeah. it might as well be all I do. Is yeah. um, I might have time to get one more and then, you know, middle name. Oh, okay. Maybe. About to be more Spurgeon wins than uh, Nick Cannon offspring. <laughs> True or false, you have received an award for greatest name in NFL history. Uh, that is false, but I mean... It's actually true. It's true. It's true? Yeah, I'm here to present you with an award. Oh, okay. Thank you, Johnny. Spurgeon win, greatest name in NFL history. <laughs> My phone's not on silent, sorry. Your agent's calling you, don't accept that award. This is actually really cool. <laughs> yeah, I went to Greatest that. name in NFL history. I, I wouldn't say I have the greatest name in NFL history. Um, I think there's a, a long list of great names. Have so, people come to you and be like, that's an amazing name? Like, is that a, a yeah, thing of topic? Every, every once in a while, yeah. people are, you know, it's, it's unique. Is, you know, is one thing. I didn't add the third on there, I forgot. I, it's I, com I it's completely okay, it. that's fine, oh, nice. that's cool. I like this stuff, I appreciate it. Yeah, you can do whatever you want, you can throw it out. No, I'm, I'm gonna put that, I'm gonna put that in the house. Just put it right next to, just move the other trophies over. <laughs> Growing up, was there like a time that you remember that you were like, I think I could have like a professional football career at some point? No, nah, never. Really? Um, no, nah, I was never the best uh, kid on my team, like in high school or college. I mean, there was never a point where I thought, you know, I'm gonna make a career out of this one day. But there used to be these magazines that come out and they would have like, dr you know, drafted players and where Mel Kuyper thought they would go in the draft. Mm -hmm. And a buddy of mine was like, hey, you're in Mel Kuyper's magazine. And I was like, who's Mel Kuyper? <laughs> and uh, he's like, man, you know, like he's this draft expert and he thinks you're gonna get drafted into the NFL. And I was like, he's full of shit. I don't know who this guy <laughs> is. Um, and so like, you know, I saw my name on this list um, and I saw other quarterbacks that I had seen play on this list. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, if he has me in the same kind of, you know, company as these guys, you know, maybe there is a chance. And um, that's kind of when I flirted with the idea, but I still didn't think it was gonna become a reality. So I, I believe I read you were, you were on your college campus the day of the NFL draft. And I think you were watching, I think you were watching by yourself, is that correct? Yeah, I was in my apartment um, on my own and uh, I didn't really want to get my hopes up. You know, I'm not really, uh, I, I wasn't really confident that I was going to get drafted. And I had just gotten a cell phone. Again, this is, you know, dating how old I am, but I had just gotten a cell phone maybe like, you know, a few months prior to this. And so uh, my agent, you know, gave all the numbers out like, like he's supposed to do. And he was like, hey, man, if your phone rings, answer it. If you see a number you don't know, answer it. And I was like, all right. And so I was watching the draft just on my own. And uh, the phone rang. And it was Chris Palmer. And he said, hey, man, do you want to be Cleveland Brown? And I said, absolutely. And then I heard my name on TV. And it was, you know, it was an incredible feeling.
that's gotta be the coolest thing ever, especially growing up not knowing like if I'm gonna be in the NFL draft or not. I think that like resonates so well with just like people kids that like dream of you know going to the NFL one day. Yeah, and you know, like I said, I mean, I was never the best player, uh, you know, on my team, you know, on any team I've been on, I've never been the best player. And I was watching your interview with Tim, and it's like, you know, somebody who has all the weight and expectations of, you know, having all these, you know, records and, you know, all these stats that are just, you know, incredible and, you know, understanding that you're on that, you know, path, that trajectory to go to the NFL, you know, I was completely different. And, um, you know, I just felt like uh, it really was a dream. It wasn't like something that I expected or, you know, it's just a matter of time, mm -hmm. you know, it was nothing like that. It was really like, man, I must be dreaming right now. All right, so let's flash back to 2000. You just got drafted by the Cleveland Browns in the sixth round. You go to Cleveland. What, what are the expectations from Chris Palmer and the staff on, on your role with the team that year? Well, um, Coach Palmer was very upfront, and uh, I really appreciate it. You know, he was like, look, we got a young quarterback already. He's obviously the number one pick. We have a veteran in tie. Uh, you know, we brought you in so you can learn. We want to, uh, you know, give you the, the, the tools to be successful and then we want to trade you. And he's like, it's good for you because, you know, you get to learn behind Ty, you get to watch, you know, a great player in Tim, and then you can go somewhere and really compete, you know, to play. So 2000, who, uh, any, any memories of Cleveland that kind of stand out with the Browns just being, in, I guess, in a young locker room, just a completely new franchise? You know, um, you know, all of it was new to me. You know, I was uh, from a small school, went to a small high school, small college. Um, you know, well, Minnesota's a big college, but I played at a small college. And, um, you know, just being in a locker room with guys who were, you know, Penn State and USC and Michigan and, you know, kind of had this um, almost like an air of professionalism that I kind of wasn't, you know, used to. Um, that took a little bit of getting used to. And then just, you know, good memories with good guys, um, you know, just kind of making friends, you know, I'm kind of introverted by nature. So, uh, you know, making friends with guys who I may not have been um, in a position to, to know otherwise, um, all those things, you know, I carry with me and I think are, are really good experiences. With Tim Couch, Ty Demmer was injured that season, then Doug Peterson comes in. What was, it like, what was that um, quarterback locker room like? Uh, so, you know, it, it was a good mix. I think, you know, from, you know, if you're the GM, you have a good mix of guys in there, right? Because like I said, Ty is just, he's a unique personality. Like he's a, yeah. a, a very funny guy. He's, um, you know, he's not what you would expect, right? Like, no, no. He gets along with everybody. He, uh, you know, he talks shit to everybody. He's, you know, he's super funny. <laughs> All right, you got some good aim. Okay. He's hit me. Oh my God. He's in the camera. And this. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta do this, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Tim was very, very, um, I, I thought for being as young as he was, I thought he was very focused on, you know, what he wanted to do and what he wanted to be. And that's kind of what I what stood out to me. He, he really wanted to, you know, take ownership of kind of the, the expectations that were put on him. Um, and then, you know, Doug was, you know, a vet like Ty, really quiet, really uh, understood how to watch film. Um, and, you know, they all kind of taught me, you know, different things. You know, I didn't learn quick enough, but, you know, those guys were very, very good about, you know, um, being open with information and trying to help. And, you know, uh, you know Ty and, and, and Doug, you know, basically relaying all the information that they knew and trying to give it to Tim and myself. and. You know, it was just a good locker room. I think we got along well. Did you, uh, did you participate in any of the pranks that Tim and Ty would pull on people? Uh, At least that's what they told me. No, nah, I mean, I was a rookie and I was a six round rookie, so I wasn't about to piss anybody <laughs> off. But look, Ty left out some stuff now. <laughs> okay, let's see. Come on, Ty. <laughs> Ty. Ty left out some stuff. I mean, like, you know, yeah, of course, like they, they used to keep like a, a big Gatorade uh, bucket like next to the stall. So you had to like sneak in there if you were gonna go in there and-, and uh, Oh, you want to take a shower? No, 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 if you were gonna- Oh, like, just in the locker room. No, if you were gonna go like, you know, do your business, like you had to like oh, sneak God. in there because if you're sitting down, <laughs> yeah, they, they dump ice water on you. Um, you know, stuff like that. There was, uh, 
I think there was ferrets in uh, in in uh, laundry bags, things like that. So, what? So yeah, there's. I mean, it was. It, we had a good time. There are ferrets in Cleveland. <laughs> Uh, they, they, had, they, uh, they found a ferret. Where, they have like an exotic animal dealer? <laughs> there, there's, there were, I will say there were ferrets in laundry bags at one point. All right, so from the locker room to the field, you got your first action, I believe, week four against the Oakland Raiders. Honestly, man, I, don't, I didn't remember that. I must have blacked out. Like, I must have seriously, uh, I don't even remember that. Being like your first snap? I don't remember my first snap really? at all. I, I mean... You just said Oakland. I thought my first snap was in uh, was actually in Cleveland against uh, Jacksonville. That's what I thought. I think it was your first start, according to your Pro Football Reference page. Well, I did start, but I started in Jacksonville. I thought we I thought we had Jacksonville at home. Also, I could be wrong though. But I mean, I believe you. If that's what it says, that's what it says. But I honestly don't remember. I think. Uh, I mean, I'm, I might have been so. Uh, Sonny, can you check the Pro Football Reference thing? I, I was. Uh, probably so focused on just getting the snap and turning <laughs> around and handing it off. I think it's true, by the way, he wasn't, like he actually did. Uh, well, I mean, it's according to the site, so. So yeah, so it was, what, what, what did I do in that game? You were like two of five for 15 yards, no interceptions. Two of five for 15, I threw the ball five times. You remember who you completed your first NFL pass to? Aaron Shea. Correct. Yeah. Aaron Shea, I believe, played at Michigan with Tom Brady. That's right, he did. Tom, I think, was uh, battling Drew Henson, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think both of them played. And so we're in rookie camp, and Aaron's talking to me, and he says, you know, my quarterback in Michigan is really, really good. Like, he's going to be, like, a great pro. And I was like, Drew Henson? And he's like, no, Tom Brady. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah, cool. And... He had nothing but like great things to say to the point where I was like, man, is this guy really good or what? And it turns out that Aaron was was right. Uh, right before like anybody else. I remember him telling me that at rookie camp. Cause you could say somebody's good, but like, and you obviously you're gonna back up your teammates and stuff. But. Telling it to me and I'm the one throwing him the ball in rookie camp. And he's like, <laughs> hey man, my quarterback at Michigan was really, really good. And I'm like, all right, so do you want this ball or not? Because you're talking about somebody else <laughs> hey, right go, now. Go play with him. What's going on? Any any memories from like on the field playing with, with Cleveland that kind of stand out to you? Anything from the Jacksonville game? Um, <laughs> I mean, memories, yeah. Um, not a lot of great ones, to be honest with you. I mean, um, there are for sure sometimes I, uh, I wish I would have, uh, you know, obviously done – a few things different as far as, you know, uh, reads or throws, things like that, that, you know, for a while it was hard for me to, you know, let go and just be like, you know, that's over with, you know, move on. Mm -hmm. You know, I kind of held on for, you know, too long thinking like, oh man, I should have done this, should have done that. That's really where, um, you know, my mind goes when I think about that. And it probably, um, it, it probably didn't allow me to really enjoy the experience as much as I should have. Um, you know, thinking back on it. Oh yeah, do you keep it in touch with anybody still? Um, I haven't, but I'm really bad about that. I'm, I don't have like any social media. We reached out to you on LinkedIn. Yeah, I don't, I don't and you're lucky you got me on there. I don't know how you got me on there. I don't know either. <laughs> so, it, you know, I'm, I'm really bad about that. I, I, wish, I wish I had done a better job, um, you know, keeping in touch with those guys, because I did enjoy my experience there. I really had a, a, a good time. I liked, uh, I liked, you know, all those guys. Um, but yeah, unfortunately I don't. Uh, I ran into Tim not too long ago at a restaurant uh, in Cincinnati. And, um, you know, I just, you know, you drift apart and it, it, it kind of sucks, but I did have a, a good time with all those guys. So when did you go to Minnesota? When, when was that, when did that trade happen? And what was that call like? That was uh, the next training camp after my rookie year. Um, so uh, Butch Davis came in and I think, uh, I think Arians came in. Mm -hmm. um, Kelly Holcomb came in. Yep. Um, so, you know, I understood kind of, you know, where I fit in. And uh, I got traded during camp to the, to the Minnesota Vikings. Was that story true that Ty told us that Butch would have everybody with their playbooks in a team meeting and then some guy would just come in and say, hey, come here? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That seems kind of ruthless. Yeah, it was cold-blooded, but I mean, that's the game, right? That year after you then embark on a, I believe, a four-year 
Canadian Football League journey. Yeah, I did the tour. I did the tour of Canada. The, the, the entire tour. That's a big country. That's a big country. I went from west to east. You took a huge hit. A really big hit. Yeah, I got to debunk that whole uh, internet thing. So, yeah, so I took a big hit. I, was, I mean, look. They said you were on the ground for... Yeah, I, I wasn't hurt. So here's what happened. Uh, it was the end of the first half. I get, you know, sacked, whatever. And, you know, the helmet comes off, and it wasn't that big a deal. It looked much worse than it was. It looked like your head got cut off. Yeah, it wasn't that big a deal. And I had... My my tackle was like, hey man, just stay down. Like we got it was only a few seconds left, just stay down. So I was like, all right, you know, like I just thrown an incomplete pass, so we weren't gonna we weren't, we weren't going anywhere. And uh so I stayed down and the uh trainer comes out and she's like, you know, a little bit panicked, and I'm like, I'm fine, I'm good. And uh over precaution, they get the stretcher out and they stabilize my neck, and I was like Literally, I was just staying down because he told me to. Like, that's the only reason I stayed oh down. Oh, my God. They're like, you're delusional. You're yeah, crazy. I'm, I'm He's lost it. <laughs> I'm good. So it was a little bit dramatic. So they wheel me out of there. Oh my and God. they take me back. And they put me in the ambulance. And I'm like, guys, like, what's going on right now? Like, I'm good. You should have ran You should have ran back on the field. It would have been, like, the most miraculous. Well, like it, like I said, it was, it was halftime. And so, like, I basically had to unstrap myself from this, like, stretcher. And I go in the locker room and everybody turns and acts like they saw a ghost. And everybody's like, oh my God, you're walking? I'm like, yeah, I'm walking. Like, what are you talking about? Um, that is the, anything else you want to debunk? There's so much false information about you on the internet. Like, the, the, my teammates were basically like, you know, I was like, we all saying a prayer for me or something? Like, I'm good. Like, so you have two boys, I believe. Spurgeon win the fourth, future father to Spurgeon win the fifth. And then Slayton, what's it like being a dad? I mean, it's the greatest, man. I really... Uh, I like I'm I'm just super blessed, man. Just you know, having those guys, uh, it uh, it really makes me feel like I was put here to do something. You know, anything you want people to remember about about Spurgeon winning third? Um, that's a tough question, man. I mean, I gotta say something profound, right? Like maybe just like don't screw up the Wikipedia page. <laughs> like get the information right on me. Like I said, I, I just feel very fortunate and blessed to be in the position that I was in. I know that um, it didn't really go the way that I wanted it to. And, you know, I, th that's okay. You know, everybody can't have the career that they, they dream of. And it's just, you know, like, like you were saying, it's not really about uh, just the, the stats. I, I, w I hope that people, you know, remember me as being a good teammate, a good guy, and, um, you know, all the other stuff, you know, it, it comes and goes. But I guess just, you know, you know, being a good person is what matters. Yeah, I think the cool thing, too, is that, so very few people get that opportunity. So like the, the fact that you were in the NFL is like, that's that is a dream for like millions and millions and millions of kids. And like, oh yeah, and look, I mean, for you know all those people out there who, you know, didn't get their shot. Like I feel, I feel for them because I probably you know was one of those people, but for some reason you know my name was called, and uh, you know that's kind of a, it, it's a different kind of feeling, you know, to kind of, like I said, Tim was on a different track, you know, Ty was on a different track. Like they were, you know, these, you know, football gods in high school and college, you know, so it's just a, a different, a different kind of mindset. All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Nice meeting you. Thanks. Yeah, you too. Man.